Hello there, welcome to this short screencast on a certain kind of problem that shows up with exponential functions. Uh, this problem has to do with if I'm given two distinct points in the plane, I would like to be able to find an exponential function that actually goes through those two points. And we've seen problems like this for linear functions. It's easy enough, we just find the slope that connects the two points and then uh, find the slope intercept form. But to do an exponential function that does uh, that goes through those two points. It's doable, but it's a little bit harder. So let's have a look at some examples here. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to take a look at a linear function that goes through uh, these two points. I'm going to make a little x, y axis here. And I'd like this function to go through the point 3, or sorry, 0, 3, there on the y axis, and also through the point uh, 4, 6. So four, six, those two points in the plane, I like to get an exponential function that goes through those two points. Now, first of all, we've got to remember what an exponential function even is. An exponential function uh, always has the form, uh, it looks like y equals some constant c times a, another constant, to the x. So x is the variable, and c and a are constants that sort of uh, control the shape of the curve here. So let's see if we can make some sense out of this. Um, well, first of all, we just want to use the fact that I know two points on here. Uh, for example, this point. Okay, This point has an x-coordinate of 0 and a y-coordinate of 3. So if I want this uh, function, I'm just kind of dashing it in here, kind of threading through those two points. Uh, if that point is on the graph of this function, then when I plug in 0 for x and get a to the 0 times c, I'm supposed to get 3 out for the y-coordinate. That's a really important point. The fact that this point 0, 3 is on the graph of the function means that when I plug in this x, I get this y. So I can use my basic framework here in the red to set up this little equation here. Now from this point, some nice things happen. a to the 0 uh, is 1. And any exponential function, the a is assumed to be a positive number. And so that positive number to the 0 power is always 1. So this flat out tells me that c equals 3. Okay, And that's a very important piece of information, because now I can go back and sort of upgrade my formula here. And I now know that my formula is y equals 3 times a to the x. So now to get my formula completely specified, the only thing I need to know is what this a is. And to do that, I'm going to go back and grab my other point here. That's going to be x coordinate of 4 and a y coordinate of 6. So if I replace, uh, switch my colors here, if I put in an x equal to 4, as we see here, like so on the right-hand side, I'm supposed to get a y of 6. Okay, And now, remember what I'm trying to do here is find a, so all I have to do is solve this equation for a. Now let's do that uh, down here in this space, or just continue going underneath the orange stuff. Uh, well, first of all, I can divide both sides by 3 and get 2 equals a to the fourth. Okay, Now to solve that equation for a, I need to take a root, because a is in the base, 4 is an exponent, so a is equal to the fourth root of 2. Uh, that is about equal to 1.1892. All right, so I found my c up above, and I found my a. And this means I can fully specify, fully flesh out this exponential function. Here it is. Uh, it will be y equals 3 times 1.1892 to the x power. And that's a complete function that is just a function of y in terms of x. And it makes sense uh, graphically because this uh, function is clearly going up. It's increasing. This is an exponential growth function. So we expect the base here to be bigger than 1, and it is. And uh, this uh, 3 here, uh, that's our, uh, our y-intercept. And that's what we saw that on the graph over here. So now let's take a look at another example where uh, we have a little bit less information to work with. Okay, so let's look at a similar example. Uh, this time I'm going to um, draw my x, y axes again. This time I'm going to choose a point uh, at x equals 1, and I want this to be at y equals 10. So 10 on the y axis and 1 on the x axis. And I also want to have the point uh, 3 and 5, 3, 5 
on this uh, xy axis. And I'm looking now for same deal, a uh, an exponential function of the form y equals c times a to the x that goes through those two points. Now this time I have a little bit less information because neither of these two points is on the y-intercept, and so I can't just automatically say anything about c like I could in the first example. But maybe we can adopt some of the practices we did uh, for the first example here, like especially using the fact that I know an x and y com uh, coordinate pair for for two points. So for example, 110 is on this graph, and that means if I substitute uh, ten, 1 for x, I get 10 for y. Let's make that substitution and see where it leads us. 10 equals c times a to the first power. And just to simplify that, raising a to the first power does nothing. So c times a equals 10. All right, now that doesn't tell us what C is, and it doesn't tell us what A is. There's a lot of things I can multiply together to give myself 10. It could be 5 and 2, or 20 and 1 half, or I, I don't really know what individually these things are, but I do know that they multiply together to give me 10. So this is about as far as I can go right now. Let's go on to the next point and see if I can uh, conclude anything from there. So in this point, if I used X equals 3, I'm supposed to get Y equals 5. So 5 would be equal to C times a to the third power. Once again, I don't get any information about c and a individually, so it might appear like I'm stuck. However, if I look up at this this uh, level right here where I've bubbled these things off, I get I can see something here. And if I take this thing and solve it for one of the variables, for example, if I solved uh, this equation for c, I would get c equals 10 over a. So I don't know what C is in terms of a number, but I do know it's 10 over A. And I can actually use that now to substitute in right there. Okay, let's substitute that C in, and I'm going to get 5 equals 10 over A times A cubed. And I like the way this is going because now I have an equation that involves just one variable, and typically we can solve those. So let's simplify a little bit. I have a cubed and I'm dividing by A, so this uh, right-hand side of the equation will simplify to 10 times A squared. Now I kind of feel like I'm getting to the end of this, so let me bounce this back up here. So that means that 1 half, divide both sides by 10, is A squared, and therefore A is equal to the square root of a half. That's about equal to uh, 0 0.7071 if you're keeping score. So now I know what A is. Okay, I know what A is, and that means I can go back up here and figure out what C is. If A is equal to this, uh, then, let me put this down below, then C is equal to 10 over that. So 10 over 0 0.7071, and that comes out to be uh, roughly 14.1421. So now I've done it, I now know what uh, A is, and I even know what C is, and that means I can go back here to my framework formula and fill it in, and here's what it looks like. Y equals 14.1421 times, here's the A, 0 0.7071 to the X power, and that's a full-blown exponential function. And this makes sense, too, graphically. I'm going to kind of sort of crudely dash in where the graph would be going here. This is pretty clearly an exponential decay function. It's decreasing, and so the base of this function would have to be less than 1, have to be between 0 and 1, and it's nicely settled in there at around 0.7. And the y-intercept here is this uh, constant multiplied out in front, and it ought to be bigger than 10, because uh, if I back up from this point at y equals 10, I'm um, heading towards the y-axis, I would need to hit somewhere around here. And if I were just guesstimating, that does seem to be around 14. Okay, so this is a sensible, uh, this makes sense from a graphical perspective. All right, so the key point in each of these examples is to set up your framework, first of all, for an exponential function. Don't try to set something up for a linear function. Uh, and then use the data points that you're given to determine the values of C and A using algebra. Good luck.